Arsenal Fan TV, absolute honour here, here with John Lydon. And uh, the reason why I'm interviewing, listen, we know about his music, we know he's the, the, the godfather when it comes to punk rock. But what I want to speak to you about is Arsenal, because that's one of your loves and one of your passions. I know you live in LA now, but yeah. first of all, do you still get to watch a lot of the games? In America, you can watch every single game. Uh, an American football audience is a really superbly educated one. It's a shame that this is the home of soccer, but you've got to go to the US to really understand it. Serious? I mean, because, you know, you get some of our fans over here sometimes saying, oh, yeah, plastic, they're plastic. How many games can you see here? They, they, these kids, they, I mean, they're picking it up now from a, a, a ground roots level. They're going to take soccer over the US. You reckon? Oh, we've watched Team USA, haven't we? Might make England look a bit dos pot. You know? And, and it, it's going to happen. The, the enthusiasm is superb. You can go to any town in America and you'll find, like, for instance, with our team, there'll be a Guna pub and it will be rammed. And they won't be moronic in there. They'll be talking proper sense. And as we were discussing earlier, they know more details than we do. I mean, they make us train spotters look silly. <laughs> now, listen, how, how long have you been supporting Arsenal? How long? Since I was uh, somewhere between four and five. Not quite sure, but my dad uh, decided it was time I learned that the local team was Arsenal and dragged me off. And from that moment onwards, the pageantry of it, the colours, the ferocity and the, and the noise and... Every single aspect of it. Had not much idea what was going on the pitch. Uh, <laughs> but you're involved with lots of people, mm. right? That's it. That's your humanity right there. Love it. Never lost that. Mm. You, you kind of, listen, you're always on tour as well as now living in L.A. Do you miss it? Do you miss that sort of vibe of the fans, uh, you know, everybody together? Yeah, for me growing up, uh, the North Bank, that was community. It was uh, everyone for Am I am Anna, you know. You could go in any direction. It would be like family, friends, neighbours. It was really very, very important about the vibe of the club. That, for me, that was the driving force and the engine of it. Mm. Uh, oh, 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 they didn't always have to make the biggest noise. I mean, one of the best Arsenal chants I ever heard, and Rambo taught me this, he goes, we're Arsenal, we sing for no one. <laughs> <laughs> Now listen, listen. Um, favorite players and teams and that over the years. I mean, who, who's been who's that for, been that for you? Off the top of my head, I have to say Bob Wilson was the most classiest gentleman ever, and the way he played and and uh, that sense of sportsmanship in it. I mean, he gave us real total class. And as a, a young kid, that was like watching your favorite sports teacher showing you how it should be done. Uh, I got to have uh, conversations with him years late, uh, you know, he was raising money for different funds and stuff. He does lots of charity work, oh, doesn't no, he? No, 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 and I helped out in it a bit, and he sent me this really excellent poster. Mm. Uh, and, and on it, of course, he's like, you know, signatures from like Frank McClintock and things. I mean, uh, I took my breath away, you know. You know what, I mean, I'm, I'm still a little kid, you know, and our double... Double uh, winners team will be forever in my mind. There's nothing that's ever going to beat that. What about the Invincibles? Or do you sort of you sort of preferred like that George Graham era, that sort of? Yeah, because that was when I was younger. Uh, the Invincibles, it was a thrill. But if you really remember that season, there were some dour moments, weren't there? Some mm. dodgy nil nils. It was, it was, uh, it was painful. Ah, <laughs> oh, you know. That, but this is what being an Arsenal supporter is like. I mean, we're always on the edge of complete disaster. <laughs> and maybe that's what sports supposed to do to you is is you know I don't know sometimes you draw you in I don't know <laughs> uh, don't get me on winger <laughs> let me get you on Wenger. let me get you on Wenger. I mean uh, you make their Rambo was just saying earlier the uh, don't get John started on Wenger. what well, what's up with Wenger? what's I've wrong with you I've had enough of that you know it's nonsense you can't keep repeating the same errors over and over again you can't be taking them humiliating ridiculous defeats from what is allegedly your competition, and consistently do nothing about it. For me, it began with not replacing Vieira. But even before that, how could Vieira want to leave? Well, he sussed something, didn't he? 
You reckon? Yeah. He see, he's seen something wrong here. What, 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 what kind of training did he get up to? I don't understand it at all. Mm. And well, I, we well, constantly have two right backs just running forward and, and there ain't no one left there. Any long ball team can beat us. That's all you need to do. You just, you know, oh, here they come, the boys in red. All right, let them, like, uh, play ping pong there for ten minutes and we'll just off it over the top. We with, with, with Wenger, oh, he has won, he has won a couple... I don't mind his... All it's, the top footballers do it. <laughs> 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 All right, listen, with Wenger... Right. Um, he has won. T- he has won two FA Cups back to back recently. It's starting to reverse it a bit. What, what, what do you think oh, of that? What on earth's the FA Cup really? Come on, when you when you was back in the day, that would have right. been a massive for you. No, that was then, but this is now. Okay, we have got two of them. Right, enough, all right, already. I want that League Cup. How about you? <laughs> Except it's not a League Cup, is it? Was it the Coca Cola Egg Cup or something? <laughs> But mind you, I want to win it this time. We're playing Spurs in it, so I want to, I want to do them and get back. It's going to be a good one. <laughs> Let's see how many tickets they allocate to our lot. Yeah, well, it's got, to be, it's got to be more than the usual allocation because it, it's a cup game. Um, but Not we've, much more. They've never been generous. <laughs> <laughs> well, going back to Venga. Well, going if, back to... If, if I see them roll over like they did the last time against that squalid, like, imitation team... I mean, I, really, get, get the bazookas out. <laughs> it's, it's absurd. It, it is. He, he's incapable of listening or learning. He's, it, it, I suppose a great way, if you want to like, uh, discuss it battle-wise, is Agincourt. He's, he's them French ponces that come charging down the hill. Like, go, Harold, I don't see no arrows. <laughs> 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 yeah, you met them, though, didn't you? <laughs> No, and, and you know, and then them clowns, what was left of them, the French, like, uh, manhooded knights, uh, they went back up the hill. What they do? They came straight back down again. And that's what Wenger does, plan A. But it's not a plan at all, is it? It seems to be like a, a Sunday kickabout team. Great quality players, but they're not relating to each other with, with any great sense of skill or depth. And, and everybody seems incapable of making that final commitment called shoot it at goal. Oof, there. The point and purpose of it. You know, I mean, uh, the Ox, I love that player. I mean, he'll take it on when he's proper Arsenal him, right? Yeah. Right? And he don't care if it ricochets anything at all. It's a goal. But I can see Fufu Wenji, right, uh, disagree with that. It, it, it seems to be against that principle. It's not called winning at any cost. It's like, win well, but don't roll over. And don't play ping pong. I ain't paying money for ping pong. So do, you, so, so, so do you think it's a style then? Because there's a lot, a lot of people saying we need a few more hardcore players in a team. Cockland sort of in there you now. Need, you need to let these players enjoy the purpose that they were built for, which is enjoy the game and attack. And you can't blame Giroud. You've got to blame the tactics he's involved with. I mean, he spends an awful lot of time running Mac and, and looking at that. So most of the time, his back's to the goal and it should be the other way around. I, I think he has something good going for himself there, but not with those those um, skillful directives, shall we put it that way? Do you think it's the tactics? Yeah, I do. I do. It's killing. It's killing what it is. I mean, we do seem to now end up with an awful lot of, like, little fellas in the middle, you know. <laughs> Honestly, this is, you know, it's Snow White and the, <laughs> and the dwarves. <laughs> Listen, what listen. a shame because we've got such great players and everybody knows it mm. but him. Right? They, they, so if I was there's in... a sense of unity, yeah, but I'll tell you who gave us unity too and I loved it. It was Podolsky. I couldn't understand getting rid of him. I mean, he might be oafish, but the boy could score. And if you let him carry on that way, that would be great. But that doesn't seem to be this beautiful game Mr. Wang is looking for. So listen, John, if I, if I was interviewing after a game, oh, would you... I'd would be Claude. <laughs> I'd, pay, I'd, be, <laughs> <laughs> I'd be worse than Claude even to begin with. I, I, I'm a pre moaner me. <laughs> We're doomed. Oh, it's going to be worse than the week before. I know it. 
<laughs> Would you be Wenger in or Wenger out though? Uh, it's time to go. Bye bye. I, I I think anyone could do better than that. If we had no manager at all at the moment, it, it would um, at least... Come on, John. You've been a bit so. harsh here, surely. He won back-to-back -back FA Cups. What was he, third last season? He's not being yeah. a bit, he, he has made a lot of mistakes. We've been being a bit harsh. Did he? I think the players really like, just decided to take it over. And I've been listening to the dialogue of the players now recently. Mert Sacky, remember we had a real mm. problem with him and he, like, he, he delivered a couple of statements there at the press that was like, oh, he took up the responsibility and we got this stat together. None of these players are telling you Wenger talked them anything out of that predicament. And that, that's, that's incredibly like uh, telling mm. of that situation. So if we, if, we, if we got rid of Wenger, who would you like to see come in? What sort of, you know, which manager out there or... Claude. <laughs> <laughs> then we'd be in real trouble, come on. <laughs> yes, we'd moan our way to the bottom of the league in a heartbeat. <laughs> I don't know, but there's something really wrong and crooked with it. Mm. I don't know if Thierry Henry is an answer. You know, I mean, after like listening yeah, to his yeah. TV punditry, mm, seems a bit clueless to me. You know. so, so not Thierry, Dennis yeah. Burkamp. Maybe he's he's, do, he's doing a decent job at the moment over in um in Holland. Yeah, that that's a particular player. I I loved the way he played. I I watched that fella Sunday. He draw three or four defenders in and still squeak the ball through. You know, and through the keyhole with that fella. Mm. That's why haven't, why haven't we got any more of that? Some of the uh, lads on that pitch can actually play that way. Mesut Ozil? A bit slow on the uptake is the fella, but he has good eyes for the perfect pass. The point is, I mean, uh, for instance, could you really rely on, um, well, we call him Forrest Gump, it's Theo Walcott to you. <laughs> Can you rely on him to get into a clear position? I've never seen him be able to, like, get away from a defender. And Emma's like, right there, you know, in front of goal. It's, all he's ever good for is running. And that takes us to the Forrest Gump thing, because Forrest would run and run and run and run. <laughs> I don't know if he's a footballer or not. I know, I know he writes good children's novels, according to the last press blurb I heard. <laughs> Listen, I can tell that you, you, you're still well into it over there. I mean, oh, yeah. you, you know, you, I can just imagine you watching it and just being so passionate watching the Arsenal over there in LA. I've got a front room just full of scarves. So that's me. Right. It's just any time I hear anyone come back to London, I like, get me something. <laughs> right. You know, and I'm here now. And of course, I go and raid the shop, like, you know. Like a ten-year-old. Mm. Uh, no, I've never lost that that keen love and interest of it. Mm. I'm in no way skillful enough to be a football player myself. I know that. At best, I could claim to be an anvil. Because... <laughs> oh, for the school team once, yeah. I was standing around and I forgot what I was even there for, and the ball hit me on the side of the head, and we scored and won the game. <laughs> That's my football achievement. But at least it went in. <laughs> <laughs> now listen, listen, finally, the music. You, you, you really got a brand new album out. You're still touring, you're still working hard. I mean, yeah. it's in you. you, you, you that's, that, that's just... Oh, you, for me, I'm, I'm, what, I'm nearly 60 years young, you know, and I've only done 40 years of music. Um, if I do another 60 years of music, that'll be a century of it. And I would see that as an achievement. Because it, it will all be good. Tell us about the album then. When, when's that out and if anyone wants to get it? Well, it's out right soon and dates don't instantly flood. <laughs> Rambo said it's out now. And I, you know, if you know anything about proper Arsenal, you know not to question him. <laughs> I mean, he was telling me earlier he was in the herd. John is the herd. <laughs> well, listen, um, it's been an absolute pleasure. Support your local hooligan. <laughs> it's been an absolute pleasure. You know what? When you came, when I walked in the room it's and you, you, you said you watch it, I, yeah, yeah, no, I'm you, flattered. Right, I, I mean, I, I clued into this in America because I want every connection I can to the game, and then out comes Arsenal TV. And I, I'm imagining it, it was something sponsored by the club, you know, in that deadpan. Uh, you know, do you remember when Lofty used to do that yeah. bit? Oh, right. No, it, it's great, it's brilliant. And then the media, 
I, I feel really, no, really. No, it's a, it's, it's an honour. It's an absolute honour. And um, just keep Arsenal. watching. Proper Arsenal. Next time you come back, come and have a chat with us, please. Plug the album. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he said plug the album. <laughs> Give the album a plug. No, oh, no. Anybody got a copy? Can I give you a copy? I would love to have a copy. <laughs> Here it goes. Do you like vinyl? Oh, listen, I love vinyl. You know what? I used to. I used to be. Um, you may not know this, Johnny. I used to be involved in music, but reggae. Oh yeah. Yeah, like, reggae was my thing, but raga, reggae, that was my thing. I had DJs at Four Aces, me when I was young. Four Aces, I'm, 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 I remember prior, Four Aces. All that prior to the, yeah. the Pistols. What the world needs now. Love this, it. This chap represents the prankster, the joker. And, and, and every culture has one. And what he does is he makes you laugh at institutions and, and pomp and circumstance. And if you look real close, he's wearing my shoes. I'm not. I'm not saying I'm that character myself, but it's someone I like a lot. <laughs> and that's and that's out right now. It is. There you go, sir. Absolute. Pl and, oh, that, listen, listen. and that's double trouble. That's about me and my wife having a row over the repair of a toilet. <laughs> uh, we got an arbitrator. It was called a plumber. And the ship was pushing. Oh, honour. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's right. And and uh, you've got a gig in, in um, it's been plugged again at Shepherd's Bush yeah. Empire, which I haven't been there for years. Oh, I, I'd love to come along to that. Atmosphere in that place. Yeah. It, it, it's it's cosy, warm, and it it reminds us all of what is really excellent about Britain. You know, when we up close and personal with each mm. other. You know, when we eyeball to eyeball, splendid times will be had. Uh, you know, I'm yeah. Musical. I'm, this, this is me, isn't it? I'm going to try and ask you to hook me up with a ticket for that. I haven't been Shepherd's Bush Empire for on years. The I'm on the list? You are. Oh, that's brilliant. That's, that's brilliant. Shepherd's I've been October. there for years. 2nd of October, John Lydon. The album, I, I'm looking forward to it already. And, you know, it's just, as I said, it's been an absolute honour to be speaking to you today. You, you know, this guy is, uh, as we know, one of the legends of the British music industry. Ouch. And a gooner. Oh, forever. And then uh, Stuart Houston took over. So I never really got the chance to work under George Graham. Um, he tried to sign me again at Tottenham three or four years later, um, which I failed a medical on my knee. Glad you did that, boy. Yeah, yeah. so I, I never got the chance to work with George again. Um, but no, a great man, mm. a disciplinarian. The players loved him. The, the players were in fear of him. Mm. But a good fear. They wanted to play for him. Uh, he trusted them. But very disciplined, didn't mm. put up with any, you know, because um, he dealt with it. Tony Adams came out publicly and, and admitted he was an alcoholic. He helped Paul Merson with all, with all his problems. And it wasn't just them two. You know, a lot of the guys enjoyed the drink. A lot mm. of the guys enjoyed the liquid lunch, as they called it. Um, but he dealt with all that issue. 